Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. We are going to do, instead of being behind by weeks <laughs> this month, in March, we are going, or no, it's February when I'm filming. We are doing March's TBR. I don't know why that took so long for me to get out. Um, this month, I'm really excited this month. I don't have as many books this month, but I feel like some of them are just either bigger or a few of them don't have audiobooks whatsoever. So it'll just take me an extra couple, like a day or two to read all of them. So right off the bat at the beginning of this month probably I want to do my finish a series in each month. So I have read, oops I should show this, <laughs> I have read the Ace of Ace of Shades at least twice and King of Fools at least once. I, I feel like I remember Ace of Shades well enough that I don't need to reread it in order to remember King Queen of Volts, which is the new one, which I just got for Christmas, so I'm finally finishing this trilogy, but I don't think I remember enough of King of Volts, so, or sorry, King of Fools, Queen of Volts, so I'm going to, my game plan is, I'm going that I only need to read, reread King of Fools in order to remember Queen of Volts, and I love this title, I'm very excited by that, um, but I'm just keeping this book nearby in case I get to king of fools and realize that I remember nothing and I'm totally lying to myself so this will be the series that I'm finishing though and I'm so freaking excited I've been waiting for forever this book was just expensive in Canada and I finally got it for the holidays so yay sorry I guess I should say if anyone doesn't know um uh this is Amanda Foodie's YA trilogy I think it's her first trilogy I want to say she had daughter of the burning city as well which I didn't like but I love this it's got like um six of crows in Las Vegas -y sort of vibes there's a bunch of gangs and they kind of operate surrounding the casinos in town and this very naive girl shows up in this town that her mom abruptly left uh, and now she's trying to find her and shows up and finds all these secrets about her mom and involvement and this entire game of cards essentially that is playing out in this Vegas like um, city and she meets a crew and crew trying to solve shit and all of the stuff that unravels about her her guardian and then I'm going to be reading the electric kingdom by David Arnold this is going to be my read a book that came out in the last 60 days which by the way I realized that after I made my yearly goals I want to asterisk that books released in the last 60 days slash books you received in the last 60 days because I don't buy everything brand new release you know what I mean but like you know but sometimes it's through the library you know anyways but this I did pick it up honestly heavily because of this <laughs> on, the yeah, on the end page there um and this is what our under so I'm kind of touching base again with the dystopian stuff I feel like we were super all into that when the Hunger Games and everything came out and then it kind of died away and then I read a couple things by Neil, Schust Neil Schusterman which I loved so I have not read Mosquito Land by this author but I know everyone who read it seems to have just absolutely loved it so I'm super excited about this it is set after the world is essentially like it's falling up it's fallen apart like most of it is just they use the term like it's a shell of what it once was um and the main character is like an 18 year old and she has a dog i think it's a girl based on yeah i think it's a girl that has a dog and she is sent to find this portal to go to another world where she meets two other characters and um it's set in like a dystopian post-apocalyptic new england which is always interesting i'm never a big fan of books set in north america for the most part but i seem to be particularly interested in the idea of north america but like once the war or whatever wipes us all out mostly because we know it's all coming it's just gonna be what it is um I always just find those ones super interesting and I know they're supposed to be like um flu carrying mosquitoes or something like this in in here something along that lines I'm super curious I just um I find dystopians in our world very fascinating so I am super optimistic about this one also it's a standalone so it's not like a giant commitment to get myself into you know I'm also reading The Case of the Missing Marquise, finally. Um, I had just genuinely never heard of the Enola Holmes um, series until like they were announcing that like um, Millie Bobby Brown was cast in it and Henry Cavill and um, what's the other guy's name from The Hunger Games? He plays, um, not Moriarty, the brother. 
can't remember his name. Um, anyways, but, and then they started announcing the cast. And I was like, oh, what is this? And I watched the movie. I love the movie. I don't know how like accurate to translation or adaptation it is, but I really, really like the movie. So I have just been super curious to see what the books are like. And so I put, I bought them because my library didn't have any of them. And immediately there was a giant holds list on them. So I put myself on the holds list and the first one came in. So I'm going to be reading this and I don't want to read the summary for this, honestly, just because I've seen the movies. I just want to go in blind surprise. Middle grade mysteries are something that I always seem to, for the most part, enjoy with a few exceptions. So I am cautiously optimistic that this will just be another series I can kind of follow along. I think there's only four books, I want to say. I could be totally wrong, but I'm curious. I like when we mess with Sherlock in like ways of like age and gender and that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm curious to see what they'll do with it. Then I'm going to be reading Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, The Osaga Murders and the Birth of the FBI by David Grant. This is becoming a movie. Leonardo DiCaprio and I think it's Martin Scorsese is directing it. Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro are like confirmed, I think, to be attached to filming. I think it's supposed to start filming this summer. It got delayed, I believe, because of COVID. Um, so I've been curious about this since that got announced. It's a true crime book. I feel like they don't get adapted into like films a lot like and like I don't know how they're gonna make that into like a blockbuster e sort of film because those are big names attached to it right so I'm like I'm not sure what they're gonna do with that I get documentaries but I don't know what they're gonna do with the film I'm very curious so I've seen this cover floating around for a little while and I just never really picked it up until I read this and then I finally did and then we're reading this in the TBR and Beyond group as one of the group reads because it's coming out <laughs> and we do true crimes every once in a while and then I finally like read the summary a couple months ago and like I'm just so freaking curious now I just need to read the summary okay in the 1920s the rich people per capita in the world were members of the Osaga Indian First Nation in Oklahoma after oil was discovered beneath their land the Osaga Road in chauffeured automobiles built mansions and sent their children to study in Europe up. Then, one by one, they began to get killed off. Oh, I imagine if the white man had anything to do with that. Um, one Osaga woman, Molly Burkhart, watched as her family was murdered. Her older sister was shot, her mother was then slowly poisoned, and it was just and that was just the beginning, as one more Osaga began to die under mysterious circumstances. In this last remnant of the Wild West, where oil men like J.P. Getty made their fortunes and where desperados such as L. Spencer, the Phantom, Ter the Phantom Terror, roamed, virtually anyone who dared to investigate the killings of them were then murdered. Um, as the death toll surpassed more than 24 Osaga, um, the newly created FBI took on the case. And I had heard vaguely about this when I was lear learning about like colonization in, in, in North America from indigenous friends and they I remember they I met I remember Osag the, like the, the name being mentioned and I was like I don't know what that is and now having read that I was like oh okay yeah that makes sense so I am super super curious about this and I feel like I'm just slowly trying to get more and more into true crime after I'll be gone in the dark that's a great entrance to it um I just want to find some good ones after because there seems to be a lot of like true crime books that people are very meh about or the author picks them up and starts writing about the true crime and then ends up being like an autobiographical thing on themselves which I'm not interested in so I am super curious about this and if you want to join us you can join us in the TBR Beyond group then I'm going to be picking up The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton I bought this a couple months ago I was super curious about it and then I realized it was an adult book so I was like oh it's gonna be like $40 minimum in Canada and then it came out in paperback and I was like oh shit I can buy it and I really do genuinely like this cover I am just fascinated with the concept of like murders at sea because like m catching criminals like on land is like difficult enough but then like the whole concept but yeah so it's set in 1634 and Samuel Pips is the world's greatest detective is being transported to Amsterdam to be executed for a crime he may or may not have committed traveling with him is his loyal bodyguard uh, Arndt Hayes, who's determined to prove his friend is innocent. Among the other guests is a noblewoman, Sarah Weasel, with a secret. But no sooner does their, sip, does their ship set out that um, <clears throat> livestock starts dying, and then the passengers hear a terrible voice whispering to them in the darkness, promising three unholy miracles followed by a slaughter. And I was like, this sounds hella cool and messed up. So I am super, super duper excited to, to read this one this month for sure. So I am fully willing to admit that the murder, or sorry, the murder, the order of the pure moon reflected in water by Zen Cho is like totally me wanting to read it because 
of the cover. I have read one other thing by Zen Cho and I didn't love it, love it. So I didn't purchase this book. So we're going through the audio through the library. Um, but everyone seems to genuinely really enjoy this and I've been really enjoying novellas. So um, Zen Cho returns with a found family Wuxia fantasy that combines the vibrancy of old school martial arts movies with characters drawn from the margins of history. A bandit walks into a coffee house and it all goes downhill from there. Uh, get in, that's not how you say it, but a young votary um, for the Order of the Pure Moon joins up with an eccentric group of thieves, whether they like it or not, in order to protect a sacred object and finds herself in a far more complicated situation than she could have ever imagined. It's such a pretty cover. And I kind of do hope that I really like it because it's novella. I'm like, maybe I should buy it. It's small. It's not going to take a lot of space or anything. So I, yeah. <laughs> okay. I am finally freaking finally going to try it. School for the Unusual Girls by Kathleen Baldwin. Um, I think four books are out. I don't know if that's the rest of the series. I'm not totally hundred percent sure. My friend Mackenzie has been pushing me to read it just like since she saw, I think I hauled it one time. Like it's probably like two to three years ago now. I've just taken for forever. It's also one of the books. It doesn't have audiobooks available. So it just gets pushed when I have other shit to do when I'm driving or whatever. But I'm, I'm genuinely curious about this because it sounds like something I would really enjoy. Um, it's 1814. Napoleon is exiled on Elba. Europe is in shambles. Britain is at war for the fall on the four and Britain is at war on four fronts what's new with Britain and the strange house school for unusual girls has become one of the regency's regency England's darkest little secrets the daughters of the beau monde who don't fit high society's constructive mold are banished to strange house to be reformed into marriageable young ladies or so their parents think in truth the headmistress the original unusual girl has plans for the young ladies to entangle them in dangerous world of spies diplomacy and war that sounds like several books like bits and pieces that I have read and honestly I'm a sucker for just like people being sent to places and it finding out like like a school their parents like here you know do good things with them and they're like thanks we're gonna make them into assassins <laughs> so I am so hopeful that I like this I have books I think one two and three do I have three I know I have one and two for sure Bald Yes, I have one, two, and three, and then I have, and a fourth came out. I got them off book outlet because I don't really love these covers, but they're just, they, I, it sounds like something I want to read. I'm also going to be picking up Angel of Greenwood. Me and a couple of the other mods in the TBR and Beyond group are kind of going to just read this together. Um, I didn't think of it until after I got it and after I made my February TBR that like, oh, you should probably should have tried to read this in February. And then I backed up and was like, no, you should be reading this shit year round. So um, I know I already had a prompt for each month to be like, read at least bare minimum three authors who are either part of the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQIA plus community or that are BIPOC um, authors. So like that should be something I'm always doing, but I think I want to get like more consciously um, aware of reading um, books by black authors specifically in the next year or so. And like, not I don't I don't ever think you should only read them during Black History Month but I feel like a lot of us just uh, subconsciously fall into that or we're like I read The Hate You Give <laughs> done I'm not racist anymore right so I I feel like I just have a harder time because I generally don't like contemporaries I don't like books that make me angry at the real world I'm already angry enough I pay attention to the news and and all of all of those things I'm perpetually making sure that I'm aware of that stuff and so I trying to get better at <laughs> finding like at least fantasies and historical fictions and I think there's just been a lot of releases this year and like late last year that I think that's getting easier and easier to just gradually do because ju I just genuinely wanted to read a song of rates and ruin so like that was just that so um but Angel of Greenwood is set during the Tulsa race massacre a 17 year old Isaiah Wilson is on the surface a, t a town troublemaker but hides the fact that he's an avid reader and a poet that never leaves home without his journal um and a passionate follower of W.E. Du Bois also side note I saw there's a book coming out in 2021 about with like W.E. Du Bois in the title I can't remember it off the top I'll put the cover here if I find it um that's another one I'd want to pay attention to and um there's several that just 
I, I attended book recommendation sessions this month spe specifying like around like black voices coming out and everything like that and th some of them just sound like genuinely amazing there's one like I think it's called like the great Mrs. Elias or something like that had never heard of her sounds so interesting of a read so interesting it's on my I want to read it so bad but yeah so um Angel and Isaiah end up working um through their through a town's like um mobile library thing and that's when the race massacre happens so it's not a long read but I'm excited that I'm getting to read it with a couple other people I feel like this is one that you probably should just because of the topic and it's a learning thing so um I am I don't want to say excited to read this like I, but I want to read it you know what I mean like it's shit that this happened and it's infuriating that they won't teach about it and the fact that they won't teach about it means they know that it's wrong but they just don't want to admit that shit right so um I'm I'm reading this this month. Then I'm going to be reading Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn. I don't think this has actually been released in North America. I think it's just in the UK right now. Um, it doesn't have stellar rating on Goodreads, but uh, I don't care. It's got a pretty cover and it sounds honestly quite interesting and I like the cover for the sequel. <laughs> Uh, Camille, a revolutionary's daughter, leads a band of outcasts, a runaway girl, a deserter, an aristoc and an er arist and an aristocratic in hiding. As the battalion de Mort, they cheat death, saving those about to meet a bloody end at the blade of Madame la Guillotine. <laughs> But their, la but their latest rescue is not what it seems. The girl's no aristocrat, but her dark and disturbing powers means that both the royalists and the revolutionaries want her. But who and what is she? So it's a bit of a historical fiction mashed with some fantasy with some French Revolution vibes. And I like... I like at least touching things that have French Revolutionary vibes. I'm also going to be picking up The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. I uh, genuinely have not read the summary. Um, I think the audiobook was on sale either on Chirp Books or Libro, so I grabbed it. And I like her writing. I love The City We Became. It's such a weird book, but it's so good. So good. So um, I have tried the fifth season, and I did like it. It's just a big, big thing. And I think I will eventually get back to that series, but The Killing Moon is the one that... I grabbed it on sale, so we're gonna we're gonna read it. I'm honestly I kinda just wanna read anything the author puts out in the fantasy realm, so and then I'm going to be reading A Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman. Finally. I bought this book at Value Village for like two dollars like two years ago now and like haven't read it yet. Um so this is book one of the Blood and Blood of Gods and Royals series. I have not read, uh, no, that's not even true. I have read something by this author. I think this is the author who put out um, The Royal Art of Poisoning. Something like that, that nonfiction that I read the other year. Super good. Um, so this is a YA fantasy. Imagine a time when the gods turn a blind eye to the agony of men. I mean, imagine. I mean, if there are gods, they're kind of fucking up right now. Um, when the last of the Helians roam the plains and evil stirs beyond the edges of the map, a time when cities burn and in their ashes, empires rise. Alexander, Macedon's 16-year-old heir, is on the brink of discovering his fatal his fated role in conquering the known world, but finds himself drawn to a newcomer. Katerina must navigate the dark secrets of court life when keeping hidden her own mission, kill the queen, but she doesn't account for her first love. Jacob, who will go into unthinkable lengths to win Katerina, even if that means having to compete with Hephaestion? Hef Hefist I think I'm saying that right. Um, a murdered shelter by the prince and far across the sea, Zofia, a Persian princess and Alexander's unmet betrothed wants to alter her destiny by seeking the famed deadly spirit eaters. I have book one and th is it three? What book is this? No, book two. I have book one and two of this series in hardcover because they were at Value Village. So I grabbed them both. Um, hopefully I like them. I, I feel like I've, I, I think this has like a fair amount of reviews on Goodreads and I think they were fairly positive. Um, I think this just came out when I was like not a, a leisure reader so it just never crossed my mind at that point. So hopefully I like it and if not I'll unhaul them both. In the TBR and Beyond group we are doing between May, no March, April and May we are reading the first three books in the From Blood and Ash uh I'll say series because I don't know how long that's going to be at this point. So book one from Blood and Ash. Genuinely, like I said, when I got this book, have not read the summary. I just know everyone's freaking out about it all the time. It's all over freaking TikTok. It's all over Instagram. And people are like cultish about this. So I'm joining in in the group, in the group read for this this month. And if I like it, I have book two on my shelf. And then I will pre-order book three um, through Amazon. And um, hopefully, hopefully I like it. 
I mean, like, I'm not super into any major fandoms right now, so, like, I could, like, handle getting sucked into one now. <sighs> okay, I've been putting off reading this book for forever because the author just doesn't seem to be finishing the series, but I'm going to be reading Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I got this two Christmases ago, I think. I think it was from Melanie. I think it was from my friend Melanie. Um, the anniversary edition of book one. Everyone I know seems to just absolutely love, absolutely love it. I genuinely don't even remember what the premise of it is. I know I looked it up when I found out about the book, but at this point I've just kind of forgotten. And I feel like I'm also at the point of like, if I love it, great, but like, and I'll keep waiting. But if I don't, like, can I just stop paying attention to it? Because I don't think he's ever going to finish the series either. So like, it's the same reason I lost interest in the bone season. It took Samantha Shannon like, what, three, four years between books. And then she was like, oh, I want to do this other thing now. Like that, to me, I don't know if that book series is finishing. So like, what's the point in putting my brain towards that? You know what I mean? So hopefully I like it. But if not, I don't think it's the end of the world in this situation. March is the month that The Unexpected Peril comes out by Deanna Rayborn, which is the next book. I think it's book six in the Veronica Speedwell series. I have that shit physical pre-ordered and audiobook pre-ordered to no one's surprise. Um, so I'm just gonna read it as soon as it comes in. I think March 2nd is its release date, so I'll probably just wake up on March 2nd and download the audiobook. So the summary of the book gives me panic in a good way because it uses the term Veronica's historian bow when I was like, what did you just call Stoker? Like, what? What? What is? What? Did you? Have you met this character? He would not like that. I need to see her. That that in. The, I need to see his reaction to that. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, this is some. They get it's during world pre World War um, conflicts in Europe, and a princess who's supposed to be signing some sort of document or something like that goes missing, and they have to go find her. So I expect more banter sexual tension that they maybe act on in this book um and eventually finding out where the that girl is so they can delay world war one a little bit longer i'm also going to be reading the e arc that i got approved for of the betrayals by bridget collins i read the summary when it first came out have not read it since and have honestly kind of forgotten but i fucking loved the binding that was such an amazingly good book like oh my god i love 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 that love that book so the betrayals is just their new fantasy standalone and i'm super excited to read it oh i don't know if i've pre-ordered that yet that is one that i will definitely be pre-ordering and like getting a physical copy of it probably the uk version and lastly um i'm going to be trying to read we are the ashes we are the fire by joy mccullough i think it is i only discovered this book when they did the cover reveal for it which is honestly i kind of like the cover reveal or the cover of it um i ended up buying the audiobook just because i haven't seen it in stores <laughs> anywhere and i genuinely hate ordering through indigo and or amazon for books that i don't have to it's historical but i'm not totally sure based on the summary like if it switches between contemporary and historical marguerite de brezzo is like in the um uh, summary of this book if you look on goodreads it's about essentially someone's sister gets raped they go through the court case the guy gets found guilty and then they're like but he's not serving prison at time and they're like what um and it's i think about revenge um so i'll have to put this picture i guess up on the screen here but i can read it off to you but the hundred years war saw no shortage of remarkable women one such example gets a little more than a footnote in the histories but it's a hell of a footnote her name is marguerite de brizzo and she hunted rapists why don't we have a statue of her can you explain to me why we have a statue after the genocidal psycho that was Sir John A. Macdonald who founded Canada and named schools after him, but we don't have a fucking statue anywhere of her? Are you kidding me? Put up Sailor Moon, the Powerpuff Girls, fucking Power Rangers, and this bitch, okay? Like, oh my god, that would be so so yeah, those are the books that I plan on reading in the month of March. I will link all of these on a Goodreads shelf and link that Goodreads shelf down below along with all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back. Let me know what you're reading this month, if you've read any of these, what your reviews are on them. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you next Tuesday.